Welcome everybody back to another Boldcast Reaction. I'm Carson. I'm Lindsay. And this is Invincible Season 2, Episode 4. Nolan's back in the picture. We'll see what kind of crazy shit goes on this episode. Leave a like and subscribe. Check out our previous reactions. Check out the Patreon to get uncut reactions for Invincible. And it looks like it's going on hiatus. So we'll see you guys whenever it comes back. <laughs> Let's go. My name is Nualza. I am from the planet Praxis. I'm so disappointed that it wasn't actually whatever that dog's name was called. <laughs> seance dog. Yeah, seance dog. Hello, son. It's been a while. Where'd you run off to? Mm -hmm. When I am not this hunchback that you see. He does not ask for your company, not at the center of... Just chilling by a black hole. Just go in there. Check it out. <laughs> he is very unperturbed being that close to a black hole. When I am on a pedestal, it's me there. Your love. <laughs> Bugs. He would get oh, crushed sa before getting that close. He saved he them. He saved them and then takes them back. I guess it's also hard to tell how close they are with the it being in 2D and just with the scale of it at all. Alright, go, you know, have another family. Yeah, do it. Mark, I brought you here because I need you to meet your brother. <laughs> Hello, son. It's been a while. Dad? They both clenched their fists. <laughs> They're like, are we in danger? <laughs> <laughs> I, I missed you. Not quite the interaction I expected. Is this you bringing me here? Yes, it's complicated. Come with me and. Now, why would you lie to me again? Yeah killed thousands of people yes why would you think i'd ever want to see you again you called mom a pet made them lie to me too just listen i don't have to listen to anything you say mark look i made a mistake and i've thought about you every day since a mistake son no you don't get to call me that anymore what do you want me to say you could have started with i'm sorry you know what don't bother all right, it wouldn't mean anything anyway. You like it here with your new friends. I guess they don't know you the way that I do. Fuck you. Much you more mature response. Watch me, Mark. It's millions of miles and yeah. you don't know the way. Yeah. Navigation was never your strong suit. Come back and we'll talk, please. What are you gonna do if I don't? Knock all my teeth out again? But there's something you need to see first. No. Do all what? It's gonna be about the Viltrumites. His people do need your help. Let me tell you why. I don't care. I know that's not true. What could possibly? They asked me to be their emperor. Emperor or conqueror? What's the difference? All right, well, I was joking before, but I mean. Welcome to our home. My husband's told me so much about you. Andressa, what the uh, fuck is going on? Did I misspeak? Shit, I'm surprised <laughs> you're married to mom. I can't go back to Earth, Mark. Not ever. The life I had there is over. All right, you're all done with mom and all done with her. Good to know. Super glad you got to show me how great your life is without us. That's not what I wanted to show you. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know why you made out with your what bug wife. Bug like <laughs> It's because he has a bug baby. Look, look. Mark. Literally. Who is that? This is your little brother. Why doesn't it look more like a Viltrumite? It also doesn't even look like a bug. This has to be 
fake. We were There's fully no... joking. There's no, no this is not way. fake. This is not fake. This is fully real. <laughs> well, I don't. I didn't really want to cut away from that. <laughs> you know, I think I'm fine. Just, no, you know. Wait, is this the sinkhole? No, that already collapsed. Yeah, I know. It just looks the exact same. Why is she walking through the tent city? Well, did she, like you, like you said before, the, yeah. Yeah. Like you said before, it's hard to tell, or it's hard to confuse. Welcome to the world of the living, clone. Who are you calling clone? Not this time. <laughs> no, no, no. I was there. I remember the machine. <laughs> the explosion. Of course you do, because. Clone, for the first time, we know exactly who's the original <laughs> and who's the inferior. This is going to be so much better. I, I feel I, like part of what made it work was not knowing. I'm kind of con always confused about like, you know you lay down on the right side, whether you're in the body or not. Like, no matter which body you're in, you know that you laid down on the left side, on the left hand <laughs> bed. So in denial. you wake up on the, oh, it's on the left. You wake up on the right this time, then you're like, oh shit, because yeah. <laughs> you expect it, or like, you know? Yeah, I, I thought that too. He's gonna find like, blown up glasses down in the hole. Of all the things that survive, if he finds his fucking glasses. Oh <laughs> my fucking I'm on god. I'm fire today. Finds, what, what else could you have introduced <laughs> that would have, like, <laughs> this house, Got obliterated, dude. They're and they're still... full. And they're whole. They're just cracked and twisted around. I wrote this episode, guys. <laughs> what? What's gonna happen next? I don't know. Just say something. Just I say. Don't... Just say something. No, just no, say no, anything. You can't to be here, right? You sure know how to take the fun out of skipping classes. Amber. I'm serious. I want you to do that one day and just be oh my right. Gosh. Eve. Hey, it's my favorite non-superhero superhero. Everything okay? Yeah, it's. Okay. I accidentally killed like hey, I, I some tried people texting Mark, but tried to help. They're not going through. Do you guys know where he is? Ooh, about that. Remember Seance Dog? <laughs> yeah. Talking alien bug from another planet. Who knew? Not this guy. That's not. That's I don't not, think that's, that's quite what happened. Did Nolan tell him to do Seance Dog to? Probably. Or he was just spying on him and saw the poster. Right. Oh, I keep a place in the city. What kind of place in the city? Could be anything she wants. She probably has a bunker. That's what I would do. Just dig a hole. All right. Now, what do you want? Nobody uh, bother you. A new wife, a kid. You just replaced us. Except, you know. Like, literally mom, instantly. That's not true. Mom's because they're bugs it's so much faster. It wasn't like that. He's way older than six months, which means you are. Fraction biology is different than ours. But Viltrum DNA is pure, isn't it? Or your mother. I was lost. When I left Earth, I found these people. I saved lives. It was like I had a purpose. I don't think he's faking it. Like no, I know, but it, he... right to stay and help. Oh, so now you're a good guy, right? You don't have to forgive me. Good, but he is innocent in all this. Innocent in what? The Viltrumite rules of interbreeding are not complicated. Rules of oh Jesus! We're only allowed to procreate with genetically similar species, humans, for example. Look at you. You are a Viltrumite in almost every way. Except I'm not a monster. By now, Viltrum knows I've left my post, and they'll find this planet. Is that why he brought Mark they here? Do, they'll see your brother as inferior and kill him. Oh. And well, I can't stop them alone. Well, maybe you well, should have thought of that. You can't stop them together. Together. No. You almost killed me, then lied to me. Not after everything you did. What I did on Earth was he's acting like it was like 15 no. years ago no he just there's just no way to say it like properly there's a way for him to get close he's he's trying to make himself feel better by getting closer to mark by like roping him into this and also because he probably wants to save his new son because now yeah like, i think he's being honest just fuck you it's just not fair how how can i help i couldn't even beat you we can start training Right away. Get you ready for what's coming. Mark. I'm thinking. What, what was that? Are they here? 
Seriously? They are Mark isn't strong enough to fight seasoned no, warrior he... Viltramites. Mark, get Andressa and your brother to safety. Where? Andressa will show you. Go. There's no time. Okay. All right. Dad. Go. This uh It's pretty Something fucked else. up of Nolan to to do this, honestly. To just yeah. Yeah. Great coping mechanism. Just fucking start another life and then put this entire planet in danger. Knowingly. Uh, it's... it's so dumb. Well, they're good people, so I'm here. Keeping them in danger. Oh, at the headquarters. That's where she is. <laughs> Seriously? This guy again? With the bullet magnetizing arm? Should have packed your bags better, robot. What? Robot's power core? Did you ever pick the wrong night to rob this place? Thought you ditched this dump. Guess they left you behind too. Huh, it's been a long week. So put Robot's thing back and I won't beat the living shit out of you. How's that for a deal? You want this back? Come and get it. Wrong choice, asshole. I don't see anything. Keep going. Lower. There. That hole? Braxton lifespans aren't like humans. Only one of your years. One year? Seriously? It's never seemed short to me. From what Nolan says, we do certain things quicker than your kind. Growing, learning, loving. It seems your father's genes have slowed our son's aging. Still, we expect his first words any day now. What do you mean? I didn't knowingly try to replace your mother. Yeah, I don't, I don't blame you for any of this. Your father saved my life and the lives of many others. At first, it was hard to know him. He was so hurt, so closed off after what happened on Earth. I fell in love with him before I knew his story. By the time I found out about you and your mother, I was, I was already, what's the human phrase? Head over feet? Heels. I know none of this is your fault. But it still hurts. Nolan loves and misses you. Even if he can't say it to you. He said it to me. Huh? Oh, fuck. Steve Harvey? Oh, so it's true. The great Nolan fathered a child with an Earth woman. What do you want? You. Stay back. I'm warning you. <laughs> Maybe I wasn't. <laughs> Another child? Ah, shit. Yeah, there's With really no hiding that. Disgusting creatures. Run. Run. Yeah, Mark's not ready. No. Stay away from my children, Lucan. You knew the consequences when you Lucan. had them. <laughs> <laughs> Mark? Mark, come with me. There's two more. <laughs> two, only two? It looked like a million. Oh, he already killed the rest of them then. Holy shit. Is Nolan just like he's way stronger so... than. Yeah. Like, I thought he was. I thought they were building up as like he's a like slightly a... above average Viltramite, but it seems like he's yeah. an elite. I guess he kind of, well, they kind of built him up like that as well. It seem like that's why they let him just stay here for a million years yeah, without yeah, yeah, actually yeah. doing I think anything. they, now that, now that we're talking about it, I think they mentioned that, that like he was, that they had, they groomed like the best of the best to be sent off. Yeah, that's right. Oh, and now she's destroying this bridge. Come on, we're not done yet. Couldn't she just like Another bridge fight? His, like metal stuff? She could do so much if the powers were. Oh my God. Shit. Consistent. She could just create like a, a a barrier around him and just squeeze him to nothing if she wanted. How are you getting beat by this guy? Because she she like egged him on. Oh boy.
Check for breathing and pulse. Please. Please just help them. She got a little bit too aggro. She's she's it's funny because like Mark was all about like, no, I need to put a leash on myself with Cecil. And he, he made choices here and there, but like she is just like, fuck your rules, you know, full vigilante. Mm -hmm. She's just being very brazen. You, you've got strength. Living with Nolan, standing up to him, raising Mark the way you did. Well, you're the real reason we're all still alive and not slaves, or worse. That's a really good point. Poor Donald, he's having a crisis. Complete existential crisis. Come on, go to basement level 12 and see the bays and bays <laughs> of replacement Donalds. He's gonna try and find like security footage of that, of the uh, thing. Oh, he's gonna not have access because he uses he won't. His, his code. I bet there's a tracker with uh, on who requests access. Oh, you know Cecil's password. Right now! <laughs> Sir, who are you talking to? Thing is, like, what do you do with that information? Yeah. Like, what you know, what's kind of what's the difference? It's definitely fucked up, but like, yeah. What do you do with that? Yeah, it's like whether one, it's like with the twins, it's like whether one's a clone or the other one's a clone. You're still alive at the end yeah. of the day, but that's a journey to go on for sure. Yeah. <laughs> once you learn that. Oh. oh. Dad. Are they all dead? Everyone? Dad. There's no way. Why? Why do I care? About them. We're weak. Short lived. Barely a species. That doesn't mean they should die. You don't understand. I'm not supposed to feel this way. How is this better? This is how you should have felt on Earth. There's the great Nolan. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> the lady with the braid. <laughs> And Super Saiyan Ned Flanders. I'll kill you for what you did to these people. Then do it. Which <laughs> is like, nice day. Because you're Nolan, so I'll make this quick. Shit. Oh, she has like a knife on the end of her face. That's badass. <laughs> Holy fuck. Oh my Never god. Break my promises. Mark, what are you doing? She's tearing you apart. Yeah, I noticed. You're fighting like you're on Earth. This is different. Stop holding back or you're gonna get us both killed. I'm not holding back. Yes, you are. She's trying to kill you, Mark. If you're not trying to kill her, you're going to die. Don't think. Well, Act. You need to fight like a Viltramite. No, I don't kill people. If you don't do this, we're all dead. You, me, your brother, and every single Praxin on this planet. Not just that, because you won't be able to go back to Earth. And then what? Yeah. Knives are like so, like sharp stuff is so effective. I think it's because she's a Viltramite. Especially, it's not all sharp stuff. He's gotten hit with with sharp stuff before. Yeah, but I mean, like N Nolan, like stabbed him with that thing and cut him open. Like a slicing thing seems yeah. to work really good. <laughs> yeah. So I think that they need to, you know, make some good like daggers or. I mean, he's doing good just beating the shit out of her. Oh, it's not made oh. of like her hair fibers. I thought that it, it was like she did some shit with her hair to turn her hair into a knife, and that's mm -hmm. why he was like Viltrumite matter. But no, it's like it's probably some special alloy or something. Fine. Fuck! Come on, do you go from this to this, and you'll be done. Well, I'd say you fought well, but hesitation. Do you regret 
Attacking my family now. Do you? Jesus. Okay. Ew. Damn. The Viltramite's elbow. Is it the people's elbow? You don't get it. I don't get it. Mark, are you okay? No. Fuck's no. sake. Don't worry. It's over. Let me have a look. Oh. He didn't finish oh. the job. He did seem pretty fin- Oh my god, you see? Yeah, yeah. yeah he's, got, he's got pulled up like he's carrying some fucking extra Halloween candy. <laughs> Next time you kill somebody, make sure they're dead. I thought they were gonna leave it there till next year. <laughs> you especially don't get something for nothing from you. Debbie? You wouldn't be protesting half as much if the money wasn't a way to keep a hold on Mark. <laughs> and on me. We take it, we feel we owe you. And I'm done feeling that way. If you change your mind. I won't. They're focusing a lot less on Cecil's sort of goings on this season. Mm -hmm. Like a lot less, suspiciously less. That seems like hmm, there's something really going on. Like last time it was always like cryptic conversation. Like we, we there's, there was a lot more lines of him, mm -hmm. you know, of him like walking around with Donald like, all right, are we good doing this? Is this going on? Like oh, kind of planning. I bet they're gonna like analyze the situation. Like these two fucked us up. Maybe we can, maybe we heal them up or not. Wait. No. Oh, no? yeah. they're taking him. They're still Viltramites. Mark, don't forget the good I did. My work, my deeds, my books. Read my books, Mark. Are they gonna be training, secret training manuals for Mark? Cause he was a, a an author on earth. That was his human <laughs> job. Read my books, his mom just threw out all the books. They were, pu they were I thought they were I, published yeah, works, I'm, right? I'm, She's getting rid of all their copies. Are you see his eyes? Can you take off the glasses? Let's see what's inside. What is this iRobot? You bleed. Thank God. <laughs> Is he gonna peel open the skin and see just a bunch of fucking... Did he dent the tip of the knife? Oh. Donald, where the hell are you? We've got a situation. That's really messed up. Yeah, Donald, you're, that's actually worse than being a clone, I think, because now you're just literally a manufactured tool for, yeah. you know. For Cecil. Yeah. My dad, what are you doing? Don't speak. Listen, my name is General Creed. You survived your first General Krieg? Worthy of your Viltramite heritage. Oh, fuck it. Your father will be executed, and you will return to Earth. You will assume his mission and prepare the planet for our rule. I know this may not appeal to you. I feel like that's maybe the dumbest thing you could possibly fucking do. You can kill a few humans to convince them to capitulate. Or we will kill millions if we arrive to find you or your planet still defiant against us. What counts as being defiant against them? Like, what do they get by, like, being subservient to them? We do not. Techn oh, no, yeah, we do know. I'll say in a second. It's almost over, I think. So. They get they get crazy technology advancement, like insane longer yeah, but, like, lifespans. What do the Viltramites get? The Viltramites, they get their resources. Um, slave labor. Okay, yeah, it's over. Uh, General Krieg. <laughs> Hope he's not a fucking dragon. Anyway, sorry. Messy wiring. Sloppy welding. Oh no, he's acting Obviously like he's so, so much better. <laughs> Even though he was the previous but clone, which makes it funnier. Be, I'm pretty sure at least. Well, we don't know. I mean, at some point he was, regardless. Like. I don't know why I didn't think of this sooner. Why stop at one idiot clone when I could have so many more? This is dumb as fuck. Oof. I mean, we're, we're finding out right now the reason why they never... No wonder your burgundy on is terrible. 
can't even make decent lemonade. I don't know why I don't sound like this all the time. I just wanna have my face is open. Are you poisoned him? Poisoned him, yeah, this is so exactly- my lemonade. The power dynamic forces, like, discrimination between them, and then there's a power struggle, but if it, neither of them know, then there's no reason to poison each other. <laughs> Sometimes things are the way they are for a good fucking reason. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. That was a really good episode. That was a crazy episode. That was a really good episode. So exactly how long has it been since he left? Like, um, like less than a year. Less right? than like, a year. Uh, like, a f like, maybe like five or six months, maybe. Yeah, say. something like that. It was a month time skip from last season to this season. I think there's been and then like there was weeks like and summer because then they went. They, they graduated, graduated and then they went to college. And then they went to college. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just, it's so interesting to me how, like, you know, like, it's so crazy to me that Nolan is like, oh, well, like, you know, things just go faster here. It's not like that. It's like, just because it goes faster for these alien people, it doesn't mean that your internal concept of time necessarily changes to match that especially when he was you saying that to convince mark it's that yeah. the point is that he feels the same way about it exactly what mark says it's you should have felt this way on earth or this is this is exactly what you should have felt because he's having this crisis of conscience but the re that's that it's what we talked about last time it's like this way it's also a very, a very interesting device that they're they age so quickly mm -hmm. compared to humans because it gives mark a sense of perspective narratively that's similar to what nolan has for humans mm -hmm. and mark's still like mostly a human he's not even he's 18. yeah right yeah yeah he just had his birthday so yeah he's 18 and he so he's a kid and he he doesn't have when he looks at humans he sees them like himself but if he looks at these bug people and he hears oh we live for a year he's like what a year a year or they take a year to like get to an adult Oh, okay. Yeah, well, either way, it's the the point is, like, the relativity aspect. Mm -hmm. And the fact that there's, like, whatever, 42 billion people on this planet, whatever it was, uh, that, that he said when he was, uh, when that when the first guy was, like, taking him mm -hmm. there. So, it, 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 it's, the point is that to, to Nolan, it's basically the same thing. Like, humans versus these mm -hmm. guys are the, roughly the same level uh, of sophistication. So, uh, but to, to, but to Mark, the differences are not as extreme. Yeah. Because he has less of a sample size. Um, and it makes, it makes, it makes, it definitely, like, I didn't, I wasn't, I was expecting, like, uh, I'm actually very, pr I'm, I'm, I'm saying I'm proud of the show, like, it's my, like, it, like, it's my nephew or something. <laughs> the, 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 I'm proud of the show for, uh, for <laughs> not doing the, doing what I fully expected of just, Mark and Nolan have a big fight, and he's like, listen, Mark, no, and they're like, the, the conversation's not interesting enough to the executives or to the writer's room, so they feel the need to spice it up, so that, or, or whoever, maybe, whether it's Robert Kirkman or whoever, oh, we need to have them fighting while they talk, that way they can have, like, these quippy mm. little things, and it's, like, a very, I'm glad they didn't do that, I was, that's, that's fully what I was expecting to start off with, the fact that Mark started off by hugging him, because he's conflicted and then still feeling the way that he feels. And then also having the maturity to just be like, fuck you. I don't have to do what you say. You're clearly manipulating me. I'm going to leave. But then also having the maturity to be like, these people are all going to die if I don't help. Mm -hmm. So I'll stay. And it's so messed up too. Like how, how Nolan's like, but Mark, Mark, it's your brother. And, and, and these people are all going to die. And it's like, yeah, you want to know why they're all going to die? Literally just because you're here. You could just leave and then they wouldn't die. You know what I mean? Like That goes could... the same for Mark. That yeah. goes the same well, for Mark. They want They know about Invincible far and wide. Yeah, but um the Viltrites were already planning to take over Earth, so whether or not Mark's there doesn't necessarily attract them there because they that already want it. Whereas true. they seem to not give a shit about these people and maybe would have never come here if Nolan hadn't like led them here essentially you know mm -hmm. so he like nolan like came here and then gave himself something to like be attached to and something to care about of like another son and then it's like oh well we have to protect these people it's just it's really interesting and then how he still like snaps at mark and is like choking him out midway through the fight because he's conflicted internally yeah, yeah. it's like it's it's 
very interesting. It's like he's experiencing everything that he experienced on Earth, but like with within like a couple of months, yeah. like all of that just like combined, and then instantly again after he was already conflicted, but then he feels like he. Like, he feels like he kind of, like, grew from that and is, like, moved on and is, like, you know, I, I want to actually, like, be good this time, you know? But yeah. it's just still s too soon to, you know. Yeah. E and he doesn't, yeah. It's well, he's he was trying, to, I think subconsciously, he's, like, trying to make up for what he did on Earth he's by to, like, starting this new family. It. Yeah. Yeah. So he, he, he was maybe seeking companionship and I imagine being as old as he is, uh, you know, looking, like, Finding companionship amongst a bunch of bug people isn't as gross to him as it must as the prospect might be to us. Obviously, you know he's he's fucking basically a god. Like he's he's super super old alien mm -hmm. man. He's seen it all uh, before he even got to Earth. But uh, so he might have been just seeking companionship, but he was also you know trying to heal by you know busying himself with helping these people, and then that turned into what it turned into on earth it, you know he had a job he, he took he had this like responsibility that he had and then uh eventually he started to care and he thought that it was going to be different or maybe he didn't he probably thought it was going to be the exact same i think that's why he called mark i guess but mm -hmm. uh you know yeah he was just he's, he's full coat mode and then he's he's trying to uh, get a better handle and he, notice he only goes into this mode when he knows that the doom is here, that and when he when he sees everything, it's it gives you kind of context for like what must have been what what was going through his mind, what definitely was going through his mind during all the shit on Earth, because mm -hmm. he, um, you know, he didn't start spouting all the shit about their lives being meaningless and their lifespans and all this stuff until he was forced to confront how sad it all was, mm -hmm. you know, like he he was he didn't he didn't for all of Mark's life he up but I mean when he was at the baseball game we saw he was like constantly disinterested and everything but like for from that point and i imagine he went back and forth throughout because he's you know a layered mm -hmm. person but um he he wasn't spouting all the time about how meaningless people are he was sort of just living in the moment and enjoying things as they were only when he was forced to confront it um when mark got his powers i guess Mm -hmm. uh, did he start to, uh, to, to rethink these things and, and to, and to use the coping mechanism, not even rethink, just those, that coping mechanism and that, uh, justification that he was using, that he keeps using of about the length of their lives, about how they're meaningless and how it doesn't matter. Um, mm -hmm. you know, he, he fell back on that sort of, and that's sort of what he's doing here. Yeah. yeah. And the fact that he, that he like had, it's like he... Like, because at the end, Mark, he's like, oh, what will you have, like, in this amount of time? He's like, oh, I'll have you, Dad. Yeah. And it's like, then he's like, he realizes how important, like, his connection is to his son. But then he kind of, it, it, the, the relationship is really on the rocks. So, like, he wants to get him back. But then he also just wants that relationship again because yeah. ev everything else will cycle through. So he then has another kid because it's like... He it's and he falls back into that same like savior of the of the of the planet kind of thing like he was on Earth like we talked about a lot at the beginning of how he just like really likes to be like put up on that pedestal yeah. even though I I think like he doesn't necessarily he doesn't like, go want out to, to be like want yeah. to be a celebrity necessarily yeah. but he, there's a reason why he if he became like an author on Earth there's a reason why yeah he became like. Look to me. I'm the I'm the hero. You know, Viltrumites who are conquering other planets. I don't think are constantly getting wrapped up in this like hero worship no. angle that that he gets is now a pattern, like you're saying, right? Like, yeah, like it seems to me most of the Viltrumites that we've seen, it's like they're cool, calm, and collected. They roll up, they kill some people, and they're like, "Hey, you better submit to us, or else I'll just kill the rest of you." And then people are like. Yeah, okay, and we saw him do it when he went to that planet with those guys that, like, kept yeah. coming in, and then he just went and he killed all of them. Yeah, that was a different like, thing, though, because that, that was, was an extermination. Thing, but, but, like, you, you, that's, that's like, the level of, like, not caring about the other things' lives yeah. that, he, that he and the rest of them usually have. Yeah. So, and now he's, he's just kind of, like, in a in a crisis. Yeah. And yeah, but th that's funny because we talked a lot earlier on before it was fully confirmed. Like, I mean, it was confirmed in the first episode that there was that Nolan was, uh, you know, 
we didn't know why. You know that he's obviously fucked up beyond, and he's mm -hmm. hiding. He's hiding his true feelings. But early, but throughout season one, you don't know like the, exactly what the reason is. Mm -hmm. um, we think we we kind of put it together almost immediately that there was that he was like the trying to conquer the planet and shit, and there's like some greater purpose. There's probably like I mentioned the Saiyans. I you know you mentioned uh, what what are the the Superman fucking race of people? What are they? Um, um, kryptonites, right? I don't know. I've never Kryptonians. Seen super Kryptonians. Kryptonians. Um. Anyway, I, I don't even. I don't, I'm not even actually a, a. I think it's more like Saiyans. I'm not actually a Superman guy, so I, I'm not 100 percent sure what's canon or what's like wh whatever. Anyway, we we figure we we kind of pieced it together all like almost immediately. But the angle that we were looking at it from was different than a lot of the people in the comments were saying and have said since then. A lot of people argue like, oh, Nolan doesn't have like an ego problem. I think that if you're like, and to me, it's like fully obvious. And I think it's made more obvious by this episode. The fact that, yeah, he, he becomes the emperor. It's like, they asked me to become their emperor. It's like, and you said yes, you, you, you know, and you said you yes. And then you married a, you, mm -hmm. you, you, you took up with a woman here and had a child he, you, and you're not, ruling these people not like not I, only you, did benevolently, he, but yeah. still like. You're not just protecting them. You're not taking a protective role. You're taking a leadership. And you're putting them all in danger. And like you're put, it's like he like went, it's like he like, this is like his security blanket. This is his like, oh, I feel safe and comfortable in this position with this type of thing that I know is fleeting to me, but I can enjoy it while I'm here kind of thing. And it, well, it's he, more than that because he cares. He genuinely he cares, cares. That's the but, difference. But it's not it's, just a coping mechanism. He actually cares about it. I know he does care, but it's 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 like he he cares, but he's also doesn't care enough to actually uh, leave. wage war on the no Bill like Trump. no like he comes here and he doesn't care enough. Well, about he the just of lost these. his family and his son, so that's why he came. He started with a coping mechanism. But deep down beneath the coping for what he lost, there is a genuine, like, like that's what this episode was showing us. There's a genuine affection and um, um, empathy that he mm -hmm. has that other Viltrumites don't have. This is a trait that I think they're getting at. This is a trait that was like breeded out of Viltrumites that uh, that other species have. When you will go to when we go to the the Flaxens here, if that's I forget what, if that's what they're called, um, they you know are relating to Mark and they relate to Nolan and the humans relate to other alien creatures like the Martians and the Martians relate to the humans and you know mm -hmm. uh, these fish people that are on Earth. I, I guess they're not technically aliens. Maybe anyway, there's all these different species of people that that can on a basic level relate to people. The Viltrumites went through this ethnic cleansing thing. Uh, uh, for for thousands of years, or however long he said, like a long time. There's a crazy interbreeding mm -hmm. war where like the all these all the weakness was breeded out of them. And what what they're getting at here is that Nolan has this like I think they're this is what how I'm interpreting. They're he, Nolan has this recessive gene of empathy where he has feelings that he's that his culture is not supposed to have. And obviously there's a they got a little bit more into the racial element of this, which we talked about off camera about like the relationship with uh, race and the series, but we haven't really got into that. We were gonna do the discussion for season one, but we never got around to it. Um, but uh, that's, that's sort of the commentary here is that he is, he's fighting for this race and he, he is loyal to them uh, historically and throughout his life. He was born and bred in this culture, but then it's being exposed to the rest of the world this this recessive gene has like awakened within him when living through these patterns it's like you know you build a habit and then they would, it, if you live your life doing certain things it can awaken certain genes within you that's actually a real thing that you can do in real life and uh I, that's kind of happening to him and that's what the show's getting at it's not just that he's like he didn't it, i think my, my point is against you is that I, I think saying that he's choosing to put everyone in danger i think is a little bit reductive of the trauma that they're trying to tell us that he's feeling like he's he's not like saying that he went here knowing that he that he, they were going to be in danger and, and it's like yes and that's how it is at first but over the development of the episode they're they're sort of feeding us the idea and the like the the real the reality that nolan isn't just wasn't just like choosing to put people in danger for his own gain in this case he uh, and and on Earth because it, it's that there's more to his character than that. He 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 on a deep deep level, despite his own wants and despite his, despite the wants of his culture, 
he genuinely feels for the suffering of others. That's why he has all these justifications, all these, mm-hmm. um, these, these, uh, these coping mechanisms having to do with existentialism and nihilism, and no, none of it matters. None of these people will live a, you know, a one a hundredth of my lifespan. It doesn't, you know, they're ants basically, but yet he still feels it, and that that tortures him. So, it's it. I think I think I think it's just saying that like you know, oh, he cared, but not enough to spare these people. It's like he. He's still a person, mm-hmm. and and that's that's the, he's he's acting irrationally, but not um, illogically from a human perspective, is what I'm trying to say yeah. against you. Yeah, sorry, I, w- I wasn't trying to say that he's just. I was trying to say I think more along the lines of what you how you explained it of like he he does genuinely care, but. Um, but because he like doesn't understand, like he doesn't fully understand why he feels the way that he feels because he knows and was like told that he's not supposed to feel that way. And that's why I think it's like, that's why I'm saying here is I feel like is a moment of weakness where he is like giving in to- A moment of vulnerability. Yeah, where, yeah, where he's, he's like leaning into this side of him, even though he, he just did that and it just ended really badly, but he's doing that again because he, is in a really bad place and he needs, like he like he gets with a new woman and has a new kid and it's like, that's him like leaning on um, like- He's falling into so, the something same pattern, else. Yeah. yeah. So I, I guess what I'm saying is like he, and like he even knows when he comes to the planet, he is gonna leave because he thinks he doesn't wanna put these people in danger, he just saved them. And then they're like, no, stay. And I think he knows rationally like, I should leave. Yes. Yeah. If I care to, like, you know, if I if I want these people to live, then I should leave. But then at the end of the day, his own feelings of, as much as he cares about other people, he also wants to be cared for because it's a nice feeling. It's it's like how we talk about how, like, you know, he has the, the loving wife and the loving child and the, the world who adores him. And, like, he wants that feeling for himself. So he stays here um, so that he can keep that feeling. For as long as he can, that, that's what what I was kind of saying is like he, um, it's a coping mechanism. Yeah, and, and yeah, yeah, but he's um, he's put it's under he's putting himself and like his feelings kind of ahead of like the safety of this planet. But at the same time, he does care about them and wants to protect them. And that's why he calls Mark, and that's why he's trying to do all these things. Um, but it's because he's struggling so much with the two sides of him that he he can't make a calculated decision either way. He's just kind of like in the in, in He's the living moment. in the moment yeah. and then he knows like he, he know yeah, you're right. He's living in the moment. He's doing these things so that he gratifies himself. He's telling himself he doesn't care because he just saw he flew for like, you know, months mm-hmm. and then just like sort of landed here haphazardly and it's just like, oh, another planet, a bunch of other fucking people. All right. Well, I guess I'll get married. Or I guess I'll be. and then he kind of just like eventually comes to, you know, get gets through it enough to have this rational this think more a little bit more rationally and also the th- I, I just love this because like he's calling mark because he needs help but it's so clear that a part of him is clearly doing all of this even the new son at least to it's... me it's clear to me maybe it's not clear maybe everybody has a different in- interpretation but i think it's la- it's it's very layered it's very interesting he like has he's doing it to convince Mark to like br- take him back and not because and also he's like my life on earth is done but you know he's always he thought he was thinking about what about what Mark said of oh well I'll always have you dad you know etc mm-hmm. etc et and I it's I, just I yeah yeah sorry go on no sorry I think I think you're right like yeah he is doing this and then also it's uh, it's almost like um I don't know like you see in like movies or whatever when there's like a or I mean, obviously in real life too. But um, like when talk about, you're going to talk about the old sibling, the old sibling has and they, they get remarried, have a younger kid. No, I, I was saying like um, like when parents are emotionally immature. Oh yeah, and yeah, they yeah. act out and then call for help, but they they like kind of put themselves in that situation, and it's their like fucked up way of trying to like reconnect with their child yes. and like in some ways like regain control over them when they have like reject it's like no you fucked up you broke my trust i don't want you in my life anymore and then they call and be like oh my god there's an emergency i need you to come over right now and then they come over and then it's just like 
like, I mean, in, you know, sometimes, but I feel like sometimes when that happens in real life, it's like it wasn't an emergency and they were just like exploiting, 100%. which is kind of like what happens when Mark shows up and he's like, there isn't an emergency. It's he, emotional manipulation, yeah. yeah. I mean, there technically was because he there knew the was. Viltrumites were going to come. Mm -hmm. But what if we find out he called the Viltrumites just to have an excuse to get Mark there and so I, they could bond over a battle? Mm -hmm. That would be crazy. But. And that would add even more complexity to it, because then he's also sacrificing possibly him, possibly Mark, possibly this new planet that he actually does care for. Uh, that would be interesting. But yeah, it's it it's definitely emotional manipulation, and that's clear, like on so many levels. Like the whole <laughs> family is emotional manipulation, really, uh, and he's using them for that. And <laughs> like it's, but. Um, it's 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 fucking it's, really interesting because because what, what like Nolan here is being really fucked up and he is fucked up and obvi he's obviously fucked up mm -hmm. but what makes it really interesting is that he actually does care well, and he's not just doing it to try and get yeah. because he loves Mark he also loves this new kid and you can tell he wants to protect his child that he mm -hmm. has it's, and but he's also using them and he's also manipulating Mark even though he loves loves him. It's just like Nolan is so fucking interesting mm -hmm. as a character. It's it I feel like it's a really good parallel and probably like relatable to a lot of people because I think like obviously sometimes there's people that are like extremely manipulative and they don't care and they are like they just use people like that's a thing. Yeah. But I do feel like a lot of a lot of the time especially when it's like a parent and a child like with a very like unhealthy relationship, like once the ki kid is like an adult, and I feel like, like it's with like Eve. Yeah, Anna? yeah, it's it's, well, it's like the thing of like the the parents do care, but are so messed up. So like they're doing like very selfish things, but they still they still care about their kid, but like not enough to like let them go or like fully like or, or you, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's it's a it's he, a de it's he, the devouring mother. Yeah, it's just, it's really interesting to see because, it, like, seeing him panic here and he's just like, Mark, like, you know, but it's just, and then he's leaving and he's like, oh, well, don't, don't forget all the good things that I did and this and that. It's clear that he's been thinking about, like, all of that kind of thing while he's over here of, like, all, all of, like, the more, like... That's, that's what I was thinking, too. It's like, so, it, 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 that's the problem, like, with the relativity aspect how many people, like, okay, he killed a few thousand people. He killed a couple of superheroes. He saved all of Earth a bunch. And it was not for the right reasons. And I think that I think that's what, what ends up mattering in the end, is the intention. Mm -hmm. uh, does it matter more than people's lives? I don't know. But he was going to sell them into slavery if Mark didn't, if Mark and Debbie didn't, like, help edge him, or edge him on, that sounds <laughs> weird. Uh, egg him on towards, uh, you know, the good side. But also here, it's like, if he blew up Earth and then saved this planet with more people, would he be a better guy? You know, like it's 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 once you get into the plus and minus, like oh, you're negative three billion people down, even though you even though you know you've cumulative cumulatively saved twenty billion people and killed twenty three billion people. You know, you're still a bad guy. It's like once you get to these. It's like once you raise the stakes enough, it just, it, that's where the intention comes in. And I think that's what really matters. And I think that that's why him being sympathetic and empathetic on a deep, deep level, despite his own desires, is so interesting. Is because you're at such a level that nothing, nothing, you get to that nihilism and you can understand the nihilism that he feels with all the, with all these people's lives. Mm-hmm. Um, but with the with the uh, the the real life parallels and stuff like that, I wonder if Robert Robert Kirkman had like an abusive family. I'm, I don't know much about him. Um, but um, also, it what like I, I was I thought you were going to go to this earlier, but you didn't. I tried I tried to get get the prediction of what you were going to say so that I could get credit for it. <laughs> um, but like this this feels I mean this is literally like um, kid who was in uh, who was born way too early. Parents were not ready to have them. The, the dad, like, you know, runs off mm. and then has a new family and then is treating this family with the, with the love that he, that the older sibling wants. And it's like, you're just, this is your second try and you're, you know, it's, yeah. it's literally his second try, but it's very relatable to real life because like, you know, there's plenty of people out there who uh, have, who live this type of situation. It's fucked up. Uh... You know, have have a these teenage pregnancy, and then when they're like thirty years old, they have their real family, and it and it feels like that, and it's fucked up. And then they're it's like no, they're not, and it's like, I mean, 
yeah, it's just it that 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 feeling in its own I feel like is probably really resonant with a lot of people and it's it's a it's a really uh weird familial situation to have like it's a, like you know, he's like he's like well i fucked up before but i'm gonna do it right i'm gonna this make time. it make and it's up like, for it well yeah. you're not making it up to me you're like making it up to this new thing that you just like made specifically to like and that's the vibe yeah. that you get at the start when he's when they're first having the conversation at the start of the episode when mm -hmm. he's just like I would like a sorry, and then Nolan doesn't even say anything because he knows that sorry wouldn't cut it. Yeah. And that's why he didn't open with it's sorry, and that's why the, the whole time he never apologized. is because he knows that an apology would just be empty as fuck. He's trying to bond with him through action and trying to make up with it in some way through his actions, which is the right thing to do, but again, it just feels really manipulative because it, it literally is manipulative. Yeah. But it's also, he is actually, his heart literally is in the right place as much as it's fighting against itself. Um, Nolan's just the best fucking character in this whole show. It's the most interesting aspect of it. And it got more interesting. And I'm happy that he's back. Well, he got carted off for execution. I wonder if he but... will get executed or if Mark will go save him. But the, okay, the problem that I have with that is when I think about how... Can, like how, how can, can Mark it? save him? How can Mark go to the Viltrumite place with like he just got his ass kicked? Yeah, you know, in a one v one. He also was holding back. He for was the majority of the but fight. But if there's like thousands of them versus like just him, like there, he's gonna go no back. To he's gonna it. read the only the the Jedi chronic um, well, holocrons. Well, I was say, we the, fuck, we, the Je sacred Jedi texts. I guess what I'm wondering is uh, if. I don't know, like, the timeline of this, like, ha if if it's going to be that, like, um, whatever brain dude comes in and, like, has a way, like, has an anti-Viltrumite thing, but then Mark uses it on, like, the Viltrumites, or if... What if Levy just saves like, him? What's, I'm, I'm not sure what's going to happen, and, like, you know, we also have the stuff going on with Donald, and I don't know if that is going to, like, Donald is going to, like, expose something of Cecil's because he feels, like betrayed and because he's not not like a real he's like a cyborg type thing like, it seems like he's fully artificial yeah so but like he it's interesting with him because he has to be real enough that he wouldn't notice that he wasn't a person you know what i mean like it's all artificial you could, know, you could just, just make the memories you could, if you could program a whole personality i mean you just like normal like bodily functions like he, he has blood he eats and goes yeah. to the bathroom and like you like, could, I think if you have the way you, it's like, what's harder to replicate? A digestive system or a human nervous system in a personality? I think a human nervous system and a personality and realistically fair. feeling and thinking is harder to replicate than just like a bunch of tubes that, that eat stuff, eat stuff, melt it down with acid, crush it around, and then shit it out. I think, you know, when you, when you think about That's what's fair. more difficult. So I think if you get to the point where you can make AI to that level, you could probably, or maybe it's based on, a, maybe it's a brain scan. We, we've seen that a bunch of times. Um, and it was, and he is a real person. So they're taking that and then making mm -hmm. a robot version out of it or something. But yeah, with, with Donald, it's, it's interesting. Like the thing, my biggest problem with the show is that it feels like once again, there's like all the stuff that's supposed to be relatable. And then there's the stuff that is really interesting and also relatable. It's like all the stuff with Mark and Nolan, all the, all this shit is cool. And not just cause it's fights, but because there's, there's stakes and tension and personal stakes, not just like, oh, the world's going to get destroyed. There's actual like personal ramifications and they're, they're playing out this like interesting family drama with this, with this, with this cool setting and this, and these, and these higher stakes, all of this together swirls together and makes an interesting story when I, and I'm sure it'll play in somehow, but it just feels like the ratio is a little bit out of, out of, off kilter because so much of it is, I don't know how Eve is going to play into this interesting mm -hmm. plot line. I don't know how Donald being an android is going to have lasting effects on the real story that's happening and mm -hmm. the real main character, like the actual thing that's going on. How How is Amber, I mean, Amber is, is different. How yeah. is, uh, what else? Fucking Rex and Monster Girl and uh, Robot. How much are they going to play into directly the drama that's playing? I'm sure there'll be soldiers in the battle. I'm sure they'll like have some machine that will turn the tides in like the great big war battle that's going to mm -hmm. happen but how are they going to affect the emotions of sort of the main set piece that's happening how are how are they going to contribute meaningfully with everything they're doing to the real story of invincible 
uh, and it feels like they're not. It feels like that's it's a B story, and that's kind of all it is. And that's my biggest problem is if it if if the, all the melodrama and all like the side relationship stuff contributed meaningfully, and maybe it will. Maybe I'm just being way too judgy and prejudgy, and maybe I'll get surprised, and, that, and I'll be happy to be surprised. But it it always just feels like. It feels like they, oh, we need to have multiple things going on to keep everything interesting. The real thing is interesting. Like, if you want to, if you want to have side characters be interesting, have them play into the main plot. Not, you, they don't have to be, like, meaningless drones who just exist only to further Mark's story. Uh, they can have their own arcs. Um, but, uh, I, I, they need to be tied in somehow to, to everything that's going on. And maybe they will. Maybe, I, maybe, I think that, maybe I'm being a little bit too harsh. I, I think know. that all that stuff is just kind of, like, building up in, like, the background for now. Also, you have to remember, like, this just got introduced. Like, we, we had, like, three episodes, because Nolan just came in at the very end of the last episode, that, like, he, like, we didn't know he was going to come back yet. And the, also, they start off the season with this. I th we kind of, I mean, we knew. Like, was he just going to disappear from the story No, forever? but we didn't know how long it was going to take or if they, like, because there's all this. Um, but even Mark, like, I'm not just talking about Nolan. I'm talking about, sorry, finish what you're saying. Sorry. Um, what I was saying is that, like, there's all, there, I feel like at this point, there's quite a bit of plot lines coming up. Like, this, it's very wide because, like, you, I, I guess what I'm interested to see where the story goes is because I, I to me, all of, like, those side characters and, like, them getting their own stories and this and that, I feel like that's all just gonna, like, play out however it's gonna play out. But to me, it's, like, they introduce kind of a new villain or, like, a new... Like, they inter... What was that guy's name again? Doc Seismic? No. Um, the brain dude. Angstrom Levy. Levy. They introduced him in episode one as, like... Like the oh, this is like the new th plot. This is like yeah. a this is a huge new development. Like no Nolan's out of here. This is like the new and thing. And now he's very much in the and background. And then now yeah. he's really in the background. So I guess when I'm thinking about like all of the um, like the Guardians and Eve and this and that, it's like I feel like like that is kind of lurking in the background because that didn't need to get added in for like this story. That is like almost completely irrelevant. It adds to this in that we know that Mark in other timelines uh, or other dimensions like sided with Nolan and like like that adds just to our knowledge really. Yeah. Um, but I think what's that I feel like because a lot of the writing for this is so good, I have I hope at least and I have a bit of faith that when that comes back, it will actually be good. So I guess what I'm thinking of is like, if that is like more tied in, like that's very like earth centric because he's from earth. Yeah. yeah. And you know, all the guardians are there and if it's going to come up to them to like, maybe Mark leaves to like go after his dad. And like, in the meantime, earth is preparing to kill him when he comes home or, and they have to do something about that. Or I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm not really sure, but how, like how it's all going to play out. But I feel like, that being at, that was added to the story for a reason and it was to like make the world a bit bigger than just mark versus his dad and like the viltramite thing you yeah. know i hope you're right i hope that it does go somewhere interesting it just feels like every time we go to it it feels like it feels like not like artificial extension because they are characters they are like they have things going on with them um it's just there's so much meaningful there's so much meaning to explore in Mark's and Mark and Nolan's story and their in their interplay. And it's, it feels the story of revolving them, even as big as it's getting, it feels very focused and it feels very like there's like, there's something that is trying to be said by it. Mm -hmm. And when I listen to Rex and Kate bickering about nothing, it feels like it's bickering for the sake of their plot line so that they can justify their place in the story. Mm -hmm. And so they can justify their time on screen in the runtime of the episode. And if they were cut out, I wouldn't, this, it wouldn't damper this interaction mm -hmm. with them at all. Like, that's, that's how I think of it. It's like, everything is like this, this is like the tent pole that's holding up the rest of the story. Mm -hmm. And everything underneath the tent is like all of the rest of the storylines. There are things that are more, they're more closer to, to that center pole. Mm -hmm. And they prop it up and actually fill out the, the space a lot more. And then there's things on the corners which, like, would be cool as their own, maybe if they were their own story. Like, Robot, I think, is a really interesting character for his own story. Mm -hmm. For a side character, he just seems so... Like, Robot is so far away from Mark as a character that I start to question, like, why isn't he just his own comic book 
-hmm. and not and why is he a side character in this version he's a good enough character and interesting enough story that he could be his own series i don't know why it, it just feels at this point because this is so it like sucks all the oxygen out of the room and then there's not enough time to actually build out mm -hmm. them in a meaningful way that uh, that connects it thoroughly it's more than here's a brainiac guy who is learning to not fear death there's th some thematic connections with like his humanity and stuff mm -hmm. like that how nolan and mark are exploring their humanity and Eve obviously is like it's sort of different than normal humans, so there's there's thematic connections for sure, and it's not fully divorced, but it's far enough away to where I feel like if we just had more things that were directly connected to the main story, it would feel more cohesive and it would be more interesting. Mm -hmm. I think that's fair. I guess. Um, but I hope I do hope you're right that yeah. it does that I'm wrong. I obviously. also think that you know maybe it's just a preference thing. Because I think also, like, think about just, like, Marvel or DC or anything like that. It's, like, all of those things. Or, like, specifically, yeah. Specifically think of, like, the Avengers. It's, like, you have the Avengers and then you have every single one of those characters. Even, like, the, like, side, side, side characters now have their own spin-off TV shows. I think yeah. it's, it's it's a thing of, like... It's sort of tapping making into Making a comic and then you make all of the characters to the point where, oh, they, they should have their own show. Let's mm -hmm. give them their own show or let's give them their own spin-off comic. Let's give them their own... Uh, let's give the Adam Eve special. Let's give uh, w whatever. You know what I mean? And yeah. I, think, I think that, like, maybe it just comes down to, like, our preference of, like not being so invested in side characters, but I know for people like some of my friends who do really like, you know, superhero stuff, it's like more is more for them. Like they yeah, want more yeah. of all the characters. They want to see all of them all the time. They want to, you know, look at fan fictions of the of this like random guy who showed up one time. They want to if there's canon material, if there's like conflicting canon material, they don't they don't care. They they yeah. just want more of it and they you, you, they want a big cast, yeah. so that there's a lot to work with. Yeah. And I think, you know, that could come in. I'm hoping that, like, with this, with, like, the writing quality and everything, that it will, it is all building to something. Um, but at the same time, um, I think that it could just come down to a preference of, like, you know, I would prefer a smaller cast of, like, where everyone is. I'm okay with a large cast. It's just, it's just I, like, I, I, it's cohesive. Yeah, yeah. You're, you, you, we're, we're on the same page. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I, I just want to make it clear to everybody else that that's not what, that's not what I'm saying. Is that, like, I, I'm okay with a large cast. I just am more, I'm more, my preference, yeah, like you said, it's definitely a preference thing for sure. But, like, and I think you're right, the fact that they're in that this is the medium of like they're they're in the the realm of superhero story fundamentally and that's always going to be the case mm -hmm. um and it's it's that's definitely not my preference as far as a category i'm way more interested in the things that are not about superheroes um yeah so it is a preference thing i prefer a cohesive well-told story with something to say that has a, a compelling drama and conflicted characters uh to large like I, I prefer tall not not wide mm -hmm. that, that's kind of, that's what I, that's what i think yeah um but i think you know uh, I, ideally there's a balance mm -hmm. but uh i feel that and in my from my preference of liking a more straight like i guess line, linear but more just like uh focused not even it doesn't even have to be linear just focused story mm -hmm. I, I i prefer like uh like direction i guess mm -hmm. and um I guess that's it. I think, I think also, you know, maybe, like, maybe, um, there's, I think I th thought that I saw something that, like, in episode one, it was, like, some of it was, like, uh, anime original, essentially, or, like... In season one? No, in, in no, episode, oh, episode one, one of season oh. two. Or I, I don't know. I can't remember. I thought I read something like that. And I'm wondering if maybe they're, like, taking a break just to, like focus like they're like okay we did th this is like the setup for season two and now we're gonna like nail down exactly how we want to like present the rest of it and like exactly where because like obviously there's the source material but you need to figure out how, like in what way you're gonna like balance that out and translate it to the screen so yeah. but i'm not i don't know any of the details of that obviously yeah. well it was a good episode mm -hmm. i guess we'll see you guys next Whatever. year see you then i'm carson i'm Lindsay. bye-bye